Okay, good afternoon, sir. Good How afternoon. are you doing? I'm doing great. What about you? I'm also good. Thanks for asking. So can you tell me, uh, Mansi, can you tell me something about yourself? Sure, sure. Why not? Uh, as you know, my name is Mansi Prasapati, and you can say Mansi Gola also because my surname is Gola. And sometimes we use Prasapati also. So that's why it's very confusing. Sometimes people don't understand the meaning of Gola. So I really also don't know the meaning of Gola, but I have this surname with my name. And uh, okay. I belong to Delhi, but I was born in UP, but I don't know much about my village. So that's why I say I belong to Delhi because I raised here. And mm -hmm. uh, yes, if I talk about my qualification, I have completed uh, master in uh, MSW. Do you know MSW? Master in Social Work. Social work, all right. Yes. Now I know it because, because you I have wanted, to explain. Yes, because I wanted to open my NGO, so that's why I did that. So have you started it? Not, not now, but okay. in future I will definitely start. So let me tell you about myself. My name is Gaurav and I'm also from Delhi. When it comes to my educational qualification, I've done masters in English. And apart from this, I'm running an institution and I have been a teacher for almost 14 to 15 years. So okay. that's all about me. Okay. I'm also, I have been teaching since 2010. All right. So what do you do? I completed my 12th board exam. I started teaching this language, English language. Even I started very early when I was in school. Okay. So, like, what do you teach? I teach English, sir. English. What do you teach? Yes. What do you teach? Same. <laughs> okay. So we are from you Delhi. Know, and we are school, you know, when I was in school, I was very poor at this language. I don't know how to express, how to learn, and how to read anything in English. So I decided to be a teacher of this language because uh, when I was in tenth class, I didn't know uh, there was there was like a uh, arts, commerce, and science. They they mm -hmm. will be separated. So I choose that I will be teacher one day of English language. Then I decided to become a teacher. But unfortunately, I'm not a common teacher. But yes, I can say I'm a teacher and I'm happy with this. So you chose that profession in 2010 somewhere. Uh, in 2007 or 6, I, okay. I think. So why did you decide to uh, be a teacher? OK, so uh, first of all, I would like to ask you something. Uh, did you watch my Jostock, application, uh, Jostock video? Not yet. Not yet. So in that, I have, uh, I have declared all the things why I've decided to be a teacher because uh, in my, uh, my means in my side, in my parents side, there, there are people like they are not not so well educated, you know. Okay. And uh, I didn't have lots of knowledge at that time when I was in school, like commerce, science and art. So at that time, I was surprised uh, when I got to know, like, uh, I have to choose one. But I was so weak, like, not so weak. I was so, uh, like, middle type of a student, average you type were, of a student. You were like an average student. Average student. So that's why I decided I will be a teacher of English language. So I, I have chosen that subject. And uh, unfortunately, again, I didn't get admission in college. <laughs> so, okay. so I did my uh, qualification like uh, in political science honors, BA in political science and master in social work. So I did that. And now I'm teaching online, but I have been teaching this language since 2010 when I decided to be a teacher. Like, but I, like, it was not uh, written in my destiny that uh, I will be a teacher, government teacher. But in my in-law side, there are so many teachers and doctors, nurses, and uh, so many uh, high posts there are, are there. There are a number of similarities between both of us. <laughs> because yes. I never wanted to be a teacher, as I said in some of the videos before. Okay. So sometimes, you know, that destiny takes us to the places which uh, we never wanted to. Uh, visit. Yes. So, uh, like uh, anything else apart from teaching that you are doing? Uh, nothing now, but I used to do work in NGO because uh, as I told you, I want to open my NGO and I love to do this. So I want to know something about you, something from you, like uh, what is the meaning of goodness? Goodness. So it's not about just being good with yourself. It is just being good with others because uh, I, I personally believe that you can say whatever you want to say to yourself, but what others think about you or what others 
simply uh, get from you. So that is something that you your true personality is. I can say that I'm very good at this or I'm very good at that. So it is just like we need to leave judgment and other people can judge us better. So I know some people might criticize us. So what? So judgment is from our side also, from our end also. So I think when you do something good for others or when you when something gives you a kind of a feeling of uh, satisfaction or you feel that you have done something for someone and that gives some kind of a smile that brings some kind of smile on your face. So I think that is something that can be called goodness. Yes, that's why I want to open my NGO. I have that goodness feeling that I want to do something good for others. Like uh, there are so many in Delhi. I'm talking about Delhi. There are so many needy children and needy women are there. They are really needy persons. So I want to help them. And uh, goodness is that like when uh, it is like a best quality. Uh, and uh, it is very difficult to have inside us because it's very easy to praise us. But it's uh, really very difficult to praise others, you know. And yes. uh, if you are if you are praising your wife, your kid, your daughter, uh, the food is tasty without tasting it. That is called goodness. So I want to do something like that for others. So that's why so I where asked. Where did this inspiration come from? Like uh, when I don't you... know. I don't know from where I get it, but uh, from my childhood, I wanted to do something for needy people because when I see them, I can't bear their to pain. You know, pain. I don't. I can't bear that pain. So that's why I decided to do something something for them because when I uh, cleared my twelve board exam, I joined an NGO and uh, I started working in that. So I was very happy at that time when I was serving for those type of people. And at that day, I decided I have to do master in this and, and then I will open my own NGO. But uh, as my husband has a transferable job, so I can't do this right now. But in future, I will definitely do this. So when I was in school after that, even I was very bad at English. I did not know much about it. So I started paying a lot of attention like you did. So I never wanted to be a teacher, to be very honest. When I was in school, uh, my parents' uh, financial conditions were not good. So uh, I could not afford any kind of tuitions or any classes. So I decided that I would do something for the people, those who are nearby my home. So first, I need to do something for myself. So I started working on myself. And I started uh, paying a lot of attention on this language. So uh, I got a job in uh, like Gurgaon. I started working. So once I started working there, I learned a lot of things because it was a multinational company. And I was working for some British clients and uh, other people. So I learned a lot of things from there. And later on, uh, Destiny knew something else. So mm -hmm. I was destined to be a teacher. So I came to this profession. And I started getting number of students. Even I got many students, those who were not able to afford or those who are not able to pay any fee. So I could relate myself with them. So I started helping those people and I helped thousands of people to get uh, like uh, to achieve their dreams or to achieve uh, something in their life. And now there are a number of people, those who are working in um, MNCs or some are abroad. So uh, do you teach online or offline? I teach offline. Now I'm planning to come online. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Because usually, uh, previously I used to teach uh, uh, offline, but now I am what I'm saying. Yeah, previously I used to teach offline, but now I'm teaching online. Because I feel very much uh, packed. Uh, I can't go anywhere. I'm pretty much uh, like uh, bound with my students. And, uh, you know, offline is something that you have to be there. So yeah. I'll be. Uh, but, uh, in online, but in online, you are anywhere you can teach them, you know. There is no need to be at that particular place. So it is good for me because uh, as I told you, my husband has a transferable job. So I yes. sometimes I can't get the students, you know, easily offline students. So this is very best thing for me that uh, God created this thing for me. Like I have created my own channel and a student started coming to me. So that is very good thing for me. I'm very thankful so to how God. How long have you been teaching online? It's been, I think, eight or seven months. Okay, so how is your experience? It's amazing. <laughs> okay, because so. when you teach like a teacher, is, a real teacher is that when you are a student doing something good, better than you, and you feel very happy and proud. And then that is called like you are a real teacher. 
to them otherwise if you feel like uh, uh, how they can do better than you and why they are able to do something better than you if you feel jealous or something then you are not a good teacher so that's why yes. when they speak better than me i feel very proud that i made them to speak this language even so, some students say that i want to speak like you so i always tell them you can't speak like me you can speak you can better, speak than, better me. than me <laughs> so if you try because i am with you and you are already studying something on your own so my knowledge and your knowledge you can uh, uh, climb the mountain even you know uh, i want to call some uh, some students name like uh, my, one of my student priyanka sudha ma'am and uh, seema ji and uh, suchita ma'am and rama ji there are so many students they are speaking better than me and i feel very happy and proud when i when they will watch this video they so this also will feel happy this is the quality of a good teacher you are very humble <laughs> you are very down to earth and uh, that Thank that's the sir. perfect quality uh, for a teacher yeah i told them you know now you are able to teach others if you want to teach others if you want to create your own channel you are ready you can do easily so this is the high time then you can do something for you <laughs> yeah we don't have to be jealous because even i have yeah. some students those who are teaching now so it's okay it's all right they are doing what yes. they like and uh, why we are people, teaching yes. why we are teaching them yes we are here to motivate them yes even uh, teaching involves a lot of motivation you have to motivate people because sometimes they don't know where to start and what to do so that's where they need some kind of uh, motivation or some kind of backing guidance so then that uh, because a teacher's guiding hand should always be there whenever they are following in their life or it's not about only education it's about the moral lessons and how to live a life there are many more things a teacher can impart in student yes you know i told so many his name but uh, so many are there so those also can speak english better than me but i forgot to call their name so sorry for them you are also a good speaker so sorry uh, for those i didn't call your name sorry it's all right they all know that you are talking about them so some names are missed so what Miss, yes, they know some you. names it's okay so <laughs> because i every day praise them you are doing good you are doing good better than me you are doing good so you can do all, more things you know so do so they they do you teach them online like are those students uh, from online classes? i teach on google meet i teach on google meet they are my okay. online student so like you started way back in 2007 or 8 or 10 so 10. now you are teaching now so what kind of difference do you see in the student like uh, from that time and uh, this time when you compare in me no no in like in teaching in like teaching, now online yes. things are there okay if i talk about myself so when i was in uh, like in 2010 i used to take help from hindi like i used to teach in hindi only in hindi like uh, they were not able to understand proper english so i was also habitual to teach them in english, hindi but now i teach them in both language because if i want to make them understand i need to take help from hindi without hindi i can't teach them properly if uh, there are so many south indian student and uh, i can say that i can't teach them properly because i don't know south indian language you know so yeah, language is a barrier there them, yes it's a, it's a task it's like a task to make them understand and uh, one of the south indian student came to me yesterday and she and he was saying ma'am i want to learn something from you so please give me uh, like allow me to take admission in your course i was saying uh, like sir or ma'am i don't know the he was sir or ma'am so i was writing sir or ma'am both thing i was saying like i i don't know your language so how will i make you understand because i don't know south indian language so he was like he was uh, he was saying no no i want to take admission i want to take admission and he took the admission you know <laughs> so have you given any classes to him or her till, not till now not till now but okay. i have a south indian student also and i am teaching him and he is happy so what is the toughest part of a teach like a, of teaching especially a language Dif difficult part yes difficult part is only this or online because if you get uh, students all over the india then you don't know their language mother tongue 
then it's very difficult to make them understand what i want to say and because they don't it's know like a, it's not like a, some like everybody knows hindi so that's the problem yeah that's why it is a big problem for me so there should be one language that everybody is able to understand any local language or hindi hindi can serve the purpose and yes. on the basis of another like like if i want to teach any other foreign language so i should go for first uh, a language which is known to both yeah the teacher then when then we can uh, build a bridge between uh, us otherwise how would i understand that person how would i make that person understand yes, yes. Uh, do you also feel the same no not exactly because i'm teaching offline so i get most of the students but Local the problem students. is that but here the problem is that now nowadays people use their mobile phones a lot they do not open uh -huh. books they are not into books so whenever i tell them to read any novel or any kind of book so what do they do they start uh, going to some of the youtube videos where they listen to those uh, audio books so it's all right to listen to any kind of book but, but when you so go through sometimes. yeah when you go through chapter wise chapter like uh, like when you're reading something you understand those words and structures and sentences and even yes. you will learn how to spell those words and how to write them in a notebook or whenever you're writing something that's why they are not able to write properly there are number of mistakes that i have seen over the years they are over smart students you know <laughs> yes even yes. they don't want to write anything from the board that i write on so they yeah, start clicking pictures and uh, sometime i give them a, a brilliant pose but they don't click my <laughs> picture they click the picture of the board <laughs> Okay. so they think that uh, we'll go back to type of students you know i also have the same type of students they don't want to write something they don't want to take like please send me the screenshot and send me the pictures of yep. that note so i also have the same type of students if you are if, physically if you present to... there if you are yes. physically present there you should be there not like in your mobile phones one pop up will take your attention there one notification is taking you to instagram and facebook yes. i can't be rude with them i can't snatch their phones so it's very difficult at times yeah you know if we want to learn something if you are actually a learner so we have yes. to like whatever we have already in my in my mind so i have to keep that knowledge in any box then i can learn something new otherwise if i'm already saying i know everything and i'm already a very genius uh, in all the things so i can't learn i and i can't That's improve that's what i was supposed to say that because number of students like there are many students those who come with the same frame of mind they think that we already know tenses yeah. and everything so when i ask them they do not know much about it they have gone through some of the books or might be some lessons in school which were only the uh, like part of their curriculum or that was part of their course so but when you want to speak to someone you need to make that person understand you know need to know the basic concepts of grammar and you need yeah. to know how to form simple sentences it's not about fancy words or difficult words it's about just making that person understand on the other hand i have student those who try to use typical difficult words or vocabulary to create an impression in front of others but that is a barrier yeah you know i also want to do same i also want to do the same because i i, I have lots of word in my mind but i am not able to use those type of word do you have any solution so what we need to do you need to understand the other person if other person is able to understand then you can try those words but mm -hmm. we never take care of our listeners a good speaker is one who listens to the other person carefully so first yeah. we have to be a good listener so what i do like whenever i find any person speaking uh, nice or superb so i change my channel i go to a different channel where i'm using uh, like some uh, typical difficult it's sentence awesome. structures and sentences mm -hmm. plus uh, vocabulary otherwise it is not needed it is a language yeah. it is so not a rocket science but uh, language means that uh, whatever we are we are saying whatever we are say whatever we want to say we we have to make others understand that is the only meaning of uh, communication you know otherwise if you are speaking to that person and that person uh, doesn't know anything about english language and you are using difficult and very powerful word and that uh, person will not be able to understand what you are saying so it doesn't yeah, mean that you are giving, using all the knowledge i was giving an example in the uh, in other class like uh, one class uh, that was on saturday so i i have a class uh, in like uh, weekends so 
I was giving an example there. They were asking me how to use those difficult, typical words or some fancy or big words so that the person can understand that we know better than him. I made them understand that what do you wear on daily basis? You wear the common clothes and your your uh, like Almira is full of those, uh, no, those clothes. But there are specific clothes that you wear for specific occasions. You don't have them in uh, like uh, everywhere. You, your cupboard is not full of those clothes. So whenever you find somebody speaking in that manner or who has extra knowledge or who is very knowledgeable, then you can simply uh, like opt for those uh, typical difficult structures or those fancy words. Otherwise, it is all right. If you want to go for a casual talk, it's all right. Very true. Very true. Very true. This is we actually need to do every day, you know. Otherwise, uh, if we if we are showing ourselves, then you are not going to show interest to talk yes. again, you know. So and sometimes I think that I'm not teaching. I am also learning. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm also here. Improve myself. Yeah, I learn a lot from my students. They keep on asking questions, and I sit in the middle. I tell them, ask whatever you want to ask. If you have any sentence or question. So why I'm able to do that? Because I have gained some knowledge by teaching them or their questions yes. make me think and make me uh, go and study those uh, concepts. Yes, that's good. Teaching is the best profession, then you can improve easily yourself, you know? Yes, and it is that's not an easy job. Teaching. That's why I have to do It is not an thing. easy job. Honestly, yeah, it's not an easy job. It is very difficult to make somebody talk. Yes. Sometimes they are not willing to talk, so you have to force them. Yeah. Do you also like? Uh, do you also provide this speaking classes or uh, debates and speeching, speeches, yes, everything. presentations, and everything? Everything. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> so in debates, they they show their interest to speak more and more or not? I have to push them. I have to make them understand. And sometimes you need to mm -hmm. ignite fire in them <clears throat> to simply. Yes. Uh, make them talk and you need to make it a bit more interesting and so those because most of the topics that uh, I give to them so I give them time and sometimes we go for extempore where a person has to speak without even thinking so that's where they learn and their like quick thinking is also needed on your feet thinking is developed when you give topic like extempore or small topics so at the beginning I check their level According to their level, first I make them talk on daily basis sentences. Yes. I uh, make them uh, think that you are in market. Imagine you were in market. You were surrounded mm -hmm. by some people. So these kind of things, these role plays we play. Yes, yes. When, you know, they, they are so many students. They don't want to speak willingly. So I need to force them. And I give them this type of topic in which they will automatically start speaking. You know, they want to win. They want to win and they want to make other beat, you know. So that's why they want to beat others. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they want to beat others. So that's why they automatically we start speaking, you know. So it's a yeah, good thing. There is uh, some kind of competition among the students. So it happens. They want to <laughs> simply win that particular argument or that debate. But sometimes, uh, like uh, they become very hyper. I have seen that some students become very hyper. So I make them understand that after, it is only a debate. Yeah, after because the class, we all are friends. Yeah. You need to uh, like uh, keep that particular thing in your mind. It is only a debate. That's why I'm making you talk. Otherwise, I wouldn't have given you this topic. <laughs> yes, it's happened with me also. So what do you but, do? Like, do you go for one-on-one on, one on one classes or group classes? Oh, I teach them in group. Okay. So do you give I them topics like this? I, I, I can't. I can't teach them one on one to one. I can't teach them. I don't have enough time. I I also have children, so I need to give time to them also. That's so why most I of the students, those who are coming to me, they are asking for personal classes. So it is difficult. Yeah, <laughs> I have single life. Uh, and I have to enjoy also my life and I have to spend time with my family also. So, so I have some students from Saudi Arabia and some other countries also. Yeah, there is a, yeah, there is a problem of time. Like, you know, uh, there is a difference in time. And yeah. uh, the timing is different there at that particular time. When they want a class, I'm in my, either I'm in bed or I'm in, in my classroom. 
my offline classroom. So that's why I'm trying to take some more time out of those offline classes and I want to devote that time to online students. But I'm not mm -hmm. going to compromise on anything. I will just uh, like increase the strength of the bat. Yes, definitely. So where do you live in Delhi? In, yes. Where do you live in Delhi? And now I am in Pashim Bihar. Pashim Bihar. Okay, I am in Adarsh Nagar. That okay. is not very far from here. Yes. But you know, I, I, I belong to South Delhi. South Delhi. All right. Yes. Okay. I was from uh, Jahangirpuri before and now I'm in Adarsh Nagar. So you know that Jahangirpuri was, was very much in uh, talk for all yes. those bad reasons. But it's all right. I'm running my institution there. And uh, I love this profession. I'm enjoying teaching. So it's uh, lovely talking to you. I hope okay. we'll have more interactive sessions like this in future. Same here, same here. It was nice session with you. We will reconnect again very soon. Yes. Bye, sir. Take care. Uh, thank you. Bye. Take care.